Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion video, and today we're going to be looking at making cinematic videos using my tutorial file, which I've already done a couple of tutorials for. Now, if you haven't seen the original one where we started to create this amazing scene from scratch, I recommend checking that out. It's on the channel. We also did a really nice sort of new features of Twin Motion 2023.2 video, where I use this as a really nice example to show you the benefits of Lumen and all the other really, really cool features as well. So let's jump into this new tutorial to show you how to make wonderful cinematic videos, and you'll be blown away by the quality that we can produce in no time at all. Thanks for watching everybody. And if you are new around here, We've just hit 16,000 subscribers on the channel, so make sure you subscribe for a chance to win 300 pounds of libraries in December. I'll be doing a draw at the end of the year, and if you're a new subscriber, you can be on the list to win. So thanks for watching, and let's jump into this video. Okay, so let's get started with this new tutorial to show you how to make wonderful cinematic videos. So I quite like the look of this sort of view, so the very first thing I'm going to do is see if I can get down to ground level. Now I've clicked M to take me down to pedestrian level, or we can go into our settings, and you'll notice we've got the drone mode. So with the drone mode, you can sort of go up and down. Okay, with the pedestrian level, basically that will take you down to an eye level, uh, to ground level essentially. So here we are, a very natural eye level. Now I may decide I want to come out of that a bit later, but for now I'll keep it in a pedestrian mode and just show you the first cinematic video using this mode here. So what we're going to do is pop into our media and you can see I've got various media in here already. So this was from the last tutorials that I've done. Um, so basically I'm going to go up and start a brand new one. Got a couple of videos in here as well. But let me kind of jump through and show you how cool this can be. So basically I'm going to click on the plus sign to generate a new video, a brand new video. Now the thing about cinematic transitions is um, if you kind of do a great big sort of move around, Okay, you'll notice that you do hear footsteps when you're in the uh, pedestrian mode. So what I can actually do is I can modify that or I can actually just go back into my drone mode. And then the good thing about that is I can swoop up and down as well. Okay, so let's just get back down to our kind of starting point. Now to refresh, we just click on the refresh button. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll actually hide the libraries just for a second. So we'll pop the libraries away and the stats panel and go full screen. So nice clean interface in the new twin motion. Okay, so obviously what a video involves is having at least two points of reference. So basically, if we transition through to maybe kind of like just look at this balcony in a bit more detail, let's just sort of swing it around, and that looks pretty good. So if I click plus, you know, that is as simple as it is to create a normal video. But I wouldn't call this cinematic because what we've got is a broad sort of camera range. And while it's going to be, you know, quite nice and smooth, um, you can see we're not particularly looking cinematic at this stage. So the next clip that I'm going to do is basically now click onto add video part, which is this button here. So basically if I click the plus button, I'll add a new part to the video. And what I'm going to do here is go over to my camera and you'll notice that at the moment we've got a pretty big focal length of 40. So I'm just going to really kind of reduce that down. Okay. And I'm going to kind of basically go quite sort of far out. Basically, let's rewind, let's click update. And basically, I'm just gonna pan across a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna spin around as we do this. Okay, so that means that I can create two little clips here. Now, if I just rewind that particular section, here we are at the very, very first broad selection. So I wouldn't necessarily call this cinematic in itself. Although it can be if we do certain qualities of things like lighting and so on. But now we're kind of zoomed quite far in. Okay, and you can see the difference. It's sort of really kind of focusing in on that level of detail. Now, another really nice little tip with cinematic video is to blur the background. So what I'm going to do here is go back into this one. I'm going to enable some depth of field. Now, of course, that's way too much depth of field right now. Basically, there's two ways that we can sort this. We can either kind of start to slide the perspective distance around, and you can see if I get this right, okay, it's quite sensitive. You're just about to be able to get focused onto the balcony, and the background is still quite blurred. Now, it is very sensitive, so I would recommend you play around with typing in numbers here. So there's five, let's go for uh, seven. Yep, that's looking pretty good. So I just want to kind of test this one out. Okay, so I'm going to go across to this one put the depth of field on. And while I can change this while I'm animating, let's match it with seven again. 
and we'll click update. Okay, so watch the difference now. When I just rewind this clip, the background is blurred out. So all our attention is focusing on that nice balcony and just about to the interiors, yet some of the kind of like depth of the interior is also greyed out. So that's the first sort of little tip on cinematic videos. Get your focal length, you know, quite large. Okay, so you're really zoomed in, but also introduce a little bit of depth of field as well. Okay, now there are some other things that we can do to increase this, but I'm keen to move on. So I think what we'll do is we'll go around to a, a totally new position. In fact, let's kind of start from this point. And now let's kind of like zoom into these open doors into the space. Let's try this and see how this works. Okay, so we're starting from this position here. I'm gonna click onto new plus sign. Let's zoom in a bit, okay, into this space here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And basically we'll keep it two clips short. So I'm gonna rewind, play. You can see we've got about 10 seconds. We can adjust the timing if we need to of this a bit later, but that looks pretty good. I like the way that we're getting the blurring in the foreground and the background as well. And what I might decide to do is just go forward a little bit more. Okay, let's move across at this stage and just focus in on this table with one more click. Um, let's just preview how that animation looks again. Very easy to do and very smooth in twin motion. I'm gonna focus in on this table. Now, one really nice thing to do here, of course, would be to actually add a bit more detail. And that's one of the beauties of twin motion. Let's go into my little libraries down here. Let's go for something in the objects, home and living room. And let's add some nice detail to this sort of focal point here. So I guess, you know, we may well have uh, like something like a laptop in there that we could kind of land in. And let's just spin that around. That looks cool with a little Twin Motion logo on. Um, you know, the obligatory mobile phone. There's always a mobile phone on someone's table, isn't there? Um, let's pop that in. Um, let's also go for something a little bit natural to soften this up a bit. So I think I'm gonna go through to living room and maybe go to plants. And let's just try out maybe one of these little orchids. Just sort of drag that on. Now, you know, immediately we've got a nice sort of focal point we can actually focus on. So let me just rewind this section now. Look at the difference. We're kind of focusing in on just something a little bit more in the scene that gives us a little bit more attention. Okay, so here's our second clip for cinematic video. Now I think I'm gonna go um, a little bit more inside one more time. So I'm just gonna kind of spin around and see if we can kind of like, just be careful we don't sort of crash outside the building. Okay, here's quite a nice little shot here. Um, just kind of looking through, I think we're inside that glass. Yeah, I like the look of that. So let's click plus. And basically what I'm gonna do here is probably go to the depth of field and pick focus. Because I really wanna just focus a bit more closely on that foreground. Now you see how I did that? If I click pick focus, I could focus on the back and click focus, like focus on that thing in the foreground, that element there, just to get that beautifully crisp. Now, I'm really gonna slow my camera down now. So I'm going to click onto my setting number one. Okay, let's update that view. And let's just pan across really slowly. Okay, I'm also gonna just introduce a little bit of camera rotation as I go around. And that is pretty slow as you can see. Okay, I might need to go a bit more, but let's click plus. Let's rewind. And you can see it's super slow. Okay, but if you put some nice background music in here, we've got that lovely blurring in the background and that lovely sort of quality focus on this foreground element here. Um, I think, you know, at any time what's really nice is I can just take this element and let's just push it forward a tiny bit so it's sort of right in the center of that image. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so already this is looking really, really nice, but what else could we do to enhance this uh, cinematic video? Well. I think for this, because it's so sort of uh, still, if you like, the motion, we're just doing a very small transition. I'm interested to see what we can do with the lighting. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my environment. The first thing I wanna do is just sort of check the time of day. Okay, so I've got the time of day slider here, and you can see, um, you know, I can kind of play around with this time of day. So let's go for something a little bit sort of uh, just sunny-ish. I wanna to go to the details and just introduce a bit more sun intensity as well into that, just to kind of get a bit more brightness. 
Okay, and finally, I want to go around to my north exposure, so local exposure, and maybe I'll just try auto exposure off. Sometimes you want to turn it on and off. Okay, we'll leave that for now. Um, I'm going to go around to the north angle, and I'm just kind of keen to see what would happen if I swing through this lighting. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do is definitely get the exposure down a bit. Let's just adjust that very slightly. I'm going to just adjust that time of day again. Okay. Now, for this view, I also think before I kind of go too far, I really want to exploit the features of Lumen, which we haven't talked about in this particular video. So I'm going to go onto my uh, rendering tab and just to introduce Lumen now. So I get a very different quality of rendering style, as you can see. Um, and Lumen is really kind of illuminating that scene in a very, very different way. In fact, it's coming out a little bit bright. So I might decide, I just want to kind of get the quality levels up a little bit more. Okay, but I also might want to just increase the uh, shadow, play around with that sort of quality. Just be careful because look, if you get those stripy shadows, that doesn't look good. So you really want that looking a bit of a balance. You can also play with the shadow bias as well to kind of tweak that uh, amount of sort of noise on the shadow. So loads of different settings that we can kind of play with here. Um, including, let's just go back to the environment, that amount of sun intensity. So let's just drop that down a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with this now. Okay, so let's click here. Um, obviously, if I click the other image, it's back to the other settings. So what I really need to do now is, is delete that image. Okay, so click update, slide through, do a little bit of rotation on our kind of view. I might decide to just move forward a bit as well. So here I'm just using the W key to move forward ever so slightly while I'm going left and right and also panning that camera around just to keep focused on that vase. So let's click plus there and see how this looks. Okay, so we'll rewind. Let's play this video. Now it's looking really interesting. There's one more thing that I want to do on this particular little clip though before we're finished. Um, I think this material is too bright. Okay, so I'm going to go into my materials. I can either choose a sort of standard one, try that. No, it's not quite the right one. So I'm going to go into my materials, perhaps go to metal. And let's choose some slightly worn chrome, maybe actually something a little bit hammered. Yeah, that looks kind of nice. If I want to just tweak the color, remember it's super easy to do. I think what would be quite nice is a sort of, uh, quite a nice sort of bluey color maybe. Now you've got to be careful, I just want to get that contrast in colour down and let's just go a little bit darker. Perfect, I'm really happy with that. Okay, so those kind of things make a big, big difference. Um, so when you're actually setting this up, you will want to tweak the materials for certain views. So we'll go back to our media. Let's have a final little rewind and see how this is looking. So we'll play through. Okay, fantastic, yeah, I'm happy. Now the last thing that I really wanted to do was just adjust the time of day or the north angle of the lighting. So I'm going to just play around with this. I'm going to go through to our north angle. We're at 40 degrees right now. So I'm pretty happy with that. If I go through to this one, what I'm going to do is just sort of tweak the angle, but not too much. Okay, just to show that that light is changing throughout the day. I don't want to go too much. So let's go through to about 58. Let's try that. Okay, so you should see that the shadows are going to move now because the light is changing. And it's probably also going through the trees, so we're getting this nice effect here. Now it looks a bit flashy here. I'll have to see how this looks when it's rendered out at full uh, 60 FPS, which is what I'm planning to do. But no, nonetheless, I think it looks cool. Okay, so if we want to now just preview our entire clip, we can just go all the way back to the start and just sort of play through, just have a little quick watch. You can also do this in full screen, which is actually pretty nice. Okay, so we're playing through the video zooming in from that sort of big panoramic view right through to that balcony, doing a little kind of zone uh, view, panning along there with a lot of depth of field, like heavy depth of field, um, so that we've got the background really nice and blurred out. Now we're moving forward and you can see that it's kind of crisping up as we get a bit closer. Uh, sorry about the distraction of that flash, by the way. Then we're kind of focusing in on our table and now we're kind of pausing through very cinematically with this sort of view transition, a little bit of rotation, a little bit of movement, and basically a bit of changing of the light as well. It does look a bit blown out, so I might need to make some final adjustments here. 
it could be that we just need to kind of reduce the overall brightness a little bit. So actually, if we go down to local exposure, okay, let's just tweak that down a tiny bit to get a little bit more depth in there. And it was definitely getting a bit bright when we got to this level. Okay, so let's just sort of dim that down. So you've got to be a bit careful. What I think I might do is go to local exposure. And here we have quite a lot more control um, that we didn't have before. And that makes quite a big difference. So I think actually boost up the overall exposure a little bit. Bring down, uh, let's get the shadows boosted up and just bring through that reduction of the brightness a little bit. That's cool. Yeah, let's do the same on here. So enable. Um, okay, that actually looks way better already just with those few little tweaks. So I'm just going to preview this little section once again. Definitely much happier now. I've got rid of those bright spots. Um, using the local exposure, which is a brand new setting in Twin Motion 2023.2. So I've gone back outside for this one. I wanted to kind of finish off on the outside and I've set up a rather nice view. So basically, I'm just going to click M, get down to pedestrian level. Just going to go a fairly low speed and just sort of walk through it a bit. And here we go, let's start with this particular position and update. Now, what I want to do here is click M, and basically I just want to kind of like do a drone as if I was sort of taking off to show this wonderful position of the building and how nice this is. And basically I'm just gonna kind of tilt that drone as I go up, that looks really cool. And I'm gonna basically finish about there. So just watch this nice little clip here. We're basically going to be taking off with our drone, uh, adjusting our camera position to kind of look down on the building as we go. And that looks really, really nice. Um, but I haven't finished yet. So let's get the depth of field put in. So I'm going to go to my depth of field and enable that. Now, way too much at the moment. So let's go and pick some focal points. Let's try focusing on the rock. Um, maybe if we focus on the building, actually that's nice because you can see the foreground is now blurred out actually with that particular shot. So I really like the look of that. Let's update the image. Okay, let's go to our last one. Let's enable once again the focal point and this time we're going to focus a bit more on maybe something like the hot tab. Okay, so now we should get a bit more blurring in the other aspects here. So let's see how this looks in comparison. So we've got a nice bit of blurring there. It kind of looks pretty nice, a um, little bit of blurring on the distance. And all of this is just in normal render mode, I think, at the moment. Sometimes it's hard to, hard to see because it's so good, the normal mode. So now let's just click settings. So both clips are selected. Um, let's go and turn, oh, Lumen is actually on at the moment. Okay, that's cool. Sometimes, as I say, you only really know once you go back to normal mode. The performance doesn't really suffer. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now here we're going to do one more little trick again, which is that cinematic lighting. So I'm going to go through to time of day. And I think I'm fairly happy with that time of day. But let's go through to this one. And as well as just adjusting that camera around a little bit more. Okay. Let's just adjust that camera around a little bit more just to get a bit, get a bit more of the building there. And click plus. It's one of the things I love about Twin Motion. We can just adjust that nice lighting. So I'm going to go down to a little bit more of a sunset view. And uh, let's just go through. I don't want to go too dark. So I just want to go to kind of just dusk, just as the light's fading out. I want to see how this looks. OK, so we go through. The lighting should be changing uh, quite rapidly as we go up. Going down to that sort of duskiness, um, you can see it sort of changes really nicely, those lovely shadows coming on. And, you know, this would be where I'd want sort of some lighting uh, inside the building, potentially. So if I want to do that briefly, I can just kind of quickly go back in. Let's go into my model here. And what I'm going to do is add in a, a directional light, you can see. But there's a really nice setting on the light. So if we go into miscellaneous, we can say dust till dawn. OK, so that light should only come on once we get into the dusky area. Let's give it a little bit more intensity and attenuation. Okay, and let's see if that made a difference. So it shouldn't make any difference right now. Um, but when I go through, maybe I'll need to move it a little bit closer to this uh, front area. You can see, I think it's sort of just turning on. Um, and as it kind of definitely is illuminating that inside of the building. Oh yeah, it's actually worked really well. So no reason why I shouldn't put a few of those. Now I've got that sorted in the design. Let's have a couple, um, obviously sometimes Let's sprinkle a couple around. 
and I think we definitely want one that's kind of moved through into our design a bit. Looks a bit weird, I know, because I've got the motion blur on, or depth of field rather. So let's just copy that over there, and let me snap one of those lights over here to... Actually, that's quite a nice little view as well. Let's just snap it to the floor, and just move it up a bit here. Okay, so let's just rewind back on our clip, so it all looks really good. Uh, when we go through to the dusk, you can see those lights turn on. The nice thing about those lights is I could adjust them here. Let's go for a little bit more of a yellowy colour, uh, cool or yellow, just all in real time. I absolutely love this. Let's get some shadows on. Okay, yeah, definitely looks different, obviously, with, with shadows, because, you know, with no shadows, it's casting light below the floor. Um, volumetric shadows, don't really need that, to be honest. And maybe the intensity, just bring that down a little bit. Just sort of play around with that little intensity. I think that looks cool. Lovely shadows there. Okay, so I'm really happy with this last little clip. Let's see how this looks in full. I'm going to go into full screen. So click full screen and press spacebar to play. Looking a bit more jerky now, but this will be fine once we render this out at full quality. So as we go through that day, those lights come on uh, just as it starts to get quite dusky and stay on um, just to kind of give that effect as well. Okay, so I'm really happy with the lighting and I've just added a few spotlights under also with this sort of nice dust till dawn setting. So as you can see, uh, those only basically turn on once we get to a certain setting just to kind of light up this area here. Um, I've also wanted to, to add a little bit more life to the image. So this is the final thing I just want to touch on. I'm gonna go through to my uh, people, my characters, and I just want to see if we can kind of bring it to life a bit with some sort of, you know, sense of actually, uh, you know, elements going on here. So what you could do is drag in, let's say a couple of people, and let's just pop this lady into the hot tub, just to give a bit of a focal point. Um, I'm not sure she should be on her mobile phone or walking around, so I'll have her idling instead. And let's just spin her around, just to give a bit of a focal point. And we'll also have a uh, hunky Michael here. Let's pop him in the tub and there we go, just to give that nice little kind of focal interaction. They're having a little bit of a drink in the hot tub. Um, so I'm just keen to sort of see if this enhances the image or not. You know, in some ways it draws the attention of the eye, but it does create something, a little bit of a focal point and sort of some drama to the image as well. So, you know, this is something that you can decide to try or not try. The really nice thing is we can easily put those people into a container, um, basically let, call it people, and basically, if I want to, I can just turn it off. There we go. Click update and turn them off on the second bit. I wonder what happened actually. I wonder what happened and will they suddenly appear? I guess they'll suddenly appear once we get that view transition from one scene to the other. Um, so that might look a little bit strange. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with the people just to see how it looks. I think when they're at a bit of a distance, um, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so final couple of tips here. We've got our entire video rendered out. Um, I just want to check that I've got the lumen on for all these clips. Certainly on for that one, that one. Uh, that one it isn't actually on, so let's, let's get it on. Yeah, okay. Let's go to settings for that whole clip. Turn lumen on. Okay, just be careful, as I say, you do sometimes need to adjust the lighting levels. Um, so with the lumen there, it's a little bit darker. So I might just see how that pans out. Yeah, it does look good, actually. So I might just need to kind of increase that brightness, that exposure level tweak, just to kind of get that. In fact, I much prefer to do the local exposure and just enable that. And I think that actually really, really helps. Okay, so let's get those shadows down a little bit darker tweak that for that particular clip. So just before we render out our final clips, there's one more thing I just wanted to show you as well. Basically, if you go to these little three dots and you click uh, collapse, basically you get the clip collapse into one section. But now what you can do is actually basically click on these little icons here and you can fade to black or fade to white in each image. So this is quite nice. If you fade to black, for example, let's click onto that one, fade to black. Let me just show you what that does. So basically, when you start the transition, it fades from black into the image and wait till it gets to the next one and then it will fade to black between. Now, if you haven't got a video editing software where you can actually do this, um, it's quite a nice little setting. So let's just turn that on for these couple of clips 
I might render out another version of this for you. So final thing just to rem remind yourself is um, when you do render these out, personally I would always go up to render them in 4K at least. You could go even bigger than that. Um, you can even do tiled rendering, but you know, 4K video is plenty. So let's go for export. I've actually rendered them out at low resolution already. And just to show you how long that took, if I go to stats, basically let's go to my stats panel over this side. You can see the last uh, video took three and a half minutes. That's all it took to render out. So with the 4K, it should take a little bit longer. Okay, so let's go for it. Let's click export. And when I'm ready, I'll just scroll down, click start export and let's go for it. So we'll put it into the same folder and I'll show you the difference between HD quality and 4K quality. Now I would expect 4K to take, you know, quite a bit longer to render, but we'll see. Uh, we'll come back and compare it to the three minutes, seven seconds in a moment when this is done. Excellent, so um, let's have a look at this in the final preview in a moment. But I'm pretty happy. So we're gonna go to the export tab and what we're going to do is just check our images. I'm not going to render out any images right now, so that's fine. Let's go to video and I'm going to render out just this video part. And you notice that once you actually put the video in there, you can choose the frame rate. Now, if you want this to be super slick and super smooth, I promise you going from 30 FPS to 60 will make a big difference. I'm not sure I've ever tried 120 yet, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, there are some other settings in here that I'll come back to on future tutorials and I have done uh, 360 videos before and while they take a long time to render they look amazing and you can pan around them while you're viewing so it's definitely something I should make a tutorial on so do subscribe if you're new around here so I think those are the main settings we needed to worry about we've got the motion blur on sometimes you can turn that off as well if you want it to be a little bit crisper okay so you can also notice that if you click up here you can actually render each individual part as well. Okay, so that's something how you can actually bring them all in. Let's render all those video parts. Okay, and let's go for it. So we've got eight video parts rendered out. So when I'm happy, I just click Start Export. So we're rendering away. If you are interested, I just want to show you my NZXT cam, which basically monitors my PC. And really what's interesting here is you can see the CPU load is pretty low. Um, we're at fairly low temperature. You know, the, the, the CPU is hardly spinning. We've got a 12 core PC here, a Ryzen, um, but the GPU is actually under pretty much full load most of the time. Um, you'll see that this will change depending on what portion of the video it's doing and the uh, temperature obviously rises up and down. You might hear the fans in the background. Uh, that's the background noise that you're hearing. But uh, you know, for this kind of rendering, it can't be helped. So I've got a uh, 2080 Ti on this particular computer with 11 gigabytes. This was from a uh, good three or four years old now. My computer in the office is a lot better with a 4070 uh, Ti. And basically this would render probably twice as fast as this one. But you know, no, I'm a Sunday, I'm just chilling. It doesn't really matter on the rendering speed. Uh, I can have a cup of tea while it's rendering, of course. And um, you know, no stress. So I just thought you'd be interested to see those system specifications. And um, so I've got the Ryzen 3 900. My office PC is way better. Also, I've got the 20 Ti graphics card. So thanks ever so much for joining everybody. Uh, 16,000 subscribers, I'm super excited. Got loads more videos planned. I'm feeling better than ever about making lots of videos. Just need a bit more time and a bit more motivation. So when you subscribe, that really, really helps the channel and you get your free, lovely tutorials. Now, of course, if you want to reach out to me for bespoke training, I'm available online uh, all over the world globally. And that's something that we work with clients all over the world to help them really take their skills to the next level. So I'd love to hear from you. You will also get a copy of my wonderful Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twin Motion book for free. So do check that out if you haven't got it or come and book me for some training. Okay, so see you in the next video. Thanks ever so much for watching. What we'll do is we'll play out with the final results and I'll put the time that they took to render in the sequence in the header. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.